Well, welcome to Red Tool House. Uh, one thing I want to point out is there are certain times of the year that it's very important to do certain things. Um, mark on your calendar. So today is actually December the 16th. So we are just five days away from the winter solstice, which of course in the northern hemisphere, uh, winter solstice is um, in December. And that's when the sun, of course, is, is in its lowest spot in the sky. So we're in West Virginia where we have you know, mountainous topography. Um, you know, for flatland, it's, it's not as critical, but it is, it is still helpful to look at this when you have buildings and stuff. But what am I talking about? Well, here it is just shortly after noon, and I'm down here in the valley. This is the lowest spot in elevation in my property. And I'm trying to determine, okay, this is, this is pretty much the week that it's going to be the darkest. It's going to be the darkest. It's going to be the shortest days of the year with the sun lowest in the sky. So I'm looking to see where is the sun hitting in the middle of the day on the property. And it helps you determine, okay, if we're going to do certain things that require sunlight or we want to have certain things that, uh, you know, you're talking about solar panels, you're talking about hoop houses, you're talking about some sort of thermal energy that you're getting from the sun, then you want to you figure out where the sun is going to be at its lowest point during the year. And I like to take this time, uh, you know, this week to go around and look and say, okay, where is the sun? And where I'm standing right now, the sun does clear the mountains, but the trees on the mountains are tall enough that they're blocking the sun from being pure. So we're seeing this dappled or filtered sunlight here because of the trees. So that's one thing to take into consideration. So what are some practical reasons for doing this, for taking this time of year to mark where the sun is in the middle of the day when it's lowest in the sky? Well, as you, you guys may have been aware, if you go back and look at some of our older videos, like our introduction video, this, our workshop used to be where we lived. We lived in this 24 by 32 as we built the main house up here on the hill. And when I built this, I really didn't want to be down here in the valley. I knew in the wintertime it was going to be cold because it gets limited sun, but that was the most ideal place to build. We didn't even have this, the house site cleared off. It was still a hillside. We had to do a bunch of uh, earthworks to... Uh, to get that uh, site prepared. But if you look, if my plan was at the time was to use solar on this building, which it wasn't at the time, but if, if I was, then uh, the, the location of this building would not have been conducive to solar panels. You can see right now here again, like I said, it's just afternoon and just getting this filtered sunlight anywhere on this building. Uh, the trees are really filtering that quite a bit. You know, the leaves are off, so sun is coming through. Uh, but it's, it's not getting good sun. You'd have to go over here onto this hillside to get good sun. So I would have had to clear this hillside. I would have had to put my solar panels over there. Of course, run my wiring across the creek into the, into the house. So that's you know, some things to take into consideration. So you may be wondering, well, what if I don't have a bunch of mountains and a bunch of trees around? Well, also you want to consider this for buildings. So let's say you've got a large barn or you've got the, the peak of your house. And you want to think about what you're going to do in your backyard. Well, if that sun is sitting lower in the sky, then it may cast a bigger shadow in your backyard. If you've got solar panel there, or you've got some, some solar heating for water or anything like that, then that could become an issue. So what I might recommend is go outside now within the next week. Um, the day that I air this video, it'll actually be um, uh, the day before the solstice. So it'll be December 20th when, this, when you all are watching this video. So this would be the day. So as soon as you watch this video, maybe go out, look around your property and see where the sun is hitting uh, in the middle of the day. But you can also track it throughout the day. Like I, I've noticed that even though the sun is filtered through here poorly, I've got this low gap here. So as the sun, the sun's going to arc down through behind these pine trees. And then it's going to, uh, it's going to actually have a little bit more intensity as it, it shines right down my valley. So there's spots here that in the middle of the day aren't getting much sun, but near the end of the day they get, they get uh, a lot more sun. So you can look at that as well. And then even over on my chicken coop where I have my solar panel, when the sun comes up in the morning, there's about three hours where the sun is completely unfiltered, heating up the, the chicken solar panel, doing really good there. But then the rest of the day it's filtered. Then at some point, like right now, there isn't even direct sunlight on the chicken coop because the sun is sitting so low and the, the, the point of the driveway comes down and blocks that. So it's a good idea to go out and mark that. Again, you want to do that around December 21st, you, you, uh, plus or minus some days there. It's not, not a huge difference. That'll give you an idea with how low the sun is sitting 
where sunlight, direct sunlight can hit on your land. So that, again, that helps you when you're, you're laying things out and planting. So check it out.